Hey, Axel the Tech Tutor here. Now that we're done with understanding some basic concepts about web development, which you learned in Intro to Coding for Web, and what to think about before creating a website, it is time to get down to business and start coding and creating a site. Before we get started, make sure you have done everything described in the previous lessons I just mentioned. You're also going to need a code editor for this lesson. I use and recommend Sublime Text because it is free, it's simple, and it's got a nice design. Sublime Text is available for both Mac and PC, and if you're on a Mac you could also get Text Wrangler from the Mac App Store. And for Windows, another popular editor is Notepad++. It doesn't look quite as good as uh, Sublime Text, but it has some functions which are not included in Sublime Text, including FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, and is a function you use to put your site on the server. But you don't have to worry about that right now, as for now we're going to keep our site on our local drives. So check out for yourself which editor you want, get it, and then continue watching this video. As you've probably noticed, the title of this video is The Skeleton of an HTML Page. Now, what does that mean? The thing is that in most programming and coding languages, such as HTML, C++, and Java, there are some small parts of text you always need to have in the beginning and end of your code, in order for it to work. These small pieces of code tell the computer things like what type of code the text file contains, and where the code in it begins and ends. This is the skeleton of a code document since it holds up the rest of the code. It is the foundation for it. The skeleton is different in all languages, and today we're going to learn what it looks like for an HTML5 document. HTML5 is, as of today, the latest version of HTML. So let's take a look at how to write the skeleton for an HTML5 document. As you can see, I have opened up my code editor sublime text here, and I've got a new empty document. The first thing we are going to do is save this document. Now you probably wonder why the heck are we saving it now when we haven't even written anything in it. The reason is because if we save this as an HTML document, the code editor will know that we are writing HTML code and it will be able to do auto completion for us, which will make the coding much faster. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to save it in a new folder called my HTML site and the name of this document is going to be index.html. Why index? Because the start page of all websites is called index. And now it is the start page of my own site that I'm going to create. There we go. As you can see I'm now editing index.html. As I mentioned in my video Intro to Coding for Web, HTML uses tags to create structure and load content. I'll show you what I mean. Let's write the first mandatory tag, which looks like this. Angle bracket, exclamation mark, doc type, HTML. What this does is it tells the web browser that this is an HTML document. The next tag is the HTML tags. The HTML tag tells us that everything in between these two tags is HTML code. So as you probably noticed right here, there are two different kinds of tags actually. There are the ones that you don't have to close, you just write it once, you, do, you just have two angle brackets like this. And then there are the tags that have to be enclosed with a closing tag. And they have four angle brackets. Alright, so that was the HTML tag. The next one we are going to look at is the head tag. Everything within the head tag is information for the web browser. So it's not things that the user or the visitor is going to to notice except for one thing which is the title tag the title tag 
I'm going to have to close it too. The title tag contains the title of the page. And that it's as simple as that. It's the little text you see on your web browser on the tabs and on the top of the web browser. You know, it informs you what page you are on. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll give this the title Clear Sound Studio. And I'll save it and then I am going to open it up in my web browser like this and as you can see it says Clear Sound Studio right over here on the top of the web browser. And if I open up a new tab it also says Clear Sound Studio over here on the tab. So the next tag we're going to look at is the meta tag which you also write inside of the head. The meta tag whoops, the meta tag contains information about which character encoding you're going to use. UTF-8 is what I recommend. It's the best option for international sites since it supports special characters for different languages such as the Swedish characters O, A uh, and Ö uh, and also special characters for many different languages. Um, if you don't include this um, there could be problems where strange symbols appear on the site instead of readable text. So to finish this tag off, you obviously need to put some more information here. And that information is char set equals UTF-8. So now you have told the web browser that you are using the character encoding UTF-8. And that is great. Now we are done with the head. So let's go on to the next tag, which is actually the last tag we are going to look at today. And that is the body tag. The body tag is the tag which contains all of the content on, content on your page which you want your visitors to see. So the things that go in here are things like text, video, images, menus, and all of your content. That's all for this lesson. Next time we are going to take a look at how to add images to your web page and also how to add and format text. If you found this class useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!